What's going on there folks? Good morning, good afternoon. It is the Earthmaster out here on this Monday. Goodness, it is a Monday, July 10th, 2023, about 11.51 a.m. here in the uh, state of California. Latest activity shows a 1.3 here into the West Coast region, it looks like, showing up here on the USGS map as well. Uh, although it uh, looks like it's upgraded to a 1.4 from the USGS right around the Long Valley Super Volcano. Nothing big going on there for now, just a little bit of small microquake activity. Uh, we also seen a 2.2 in the vicinity there yesterday as well. Uh, looking at the rest of California, a little spotty movement out here today. Mostly, if not all of it, uh, microquake activity. Let's see what we got, look at that, nothing. Zip zero above the 2.5 threshold. We're not really seeing any major swarming kicking off down here in the south either. Uh, just a little handful of earthquakes there from ye mainly yesterday. We did have a couple after midnight, but continuing to watch that. But right now, things are taking a little break out here across the west coast. Not a whole lot of earthquake activity to report here in the California region. Over around Yellowstone, uh, a couple earthquakes uh, from yesterday. They must have just add, added those on, 1.7 and a 1.9. Sometimes they don't get to these smaller earthquakes that are below the 2.5 threshold until a business day. And today's Monday, USGS is working. Uh, other than that, uh, most of the earthquakes, you know, they have to be above a 2.5 level for them to even be put out on the preliminary earthquake catalog. Let's see what we have for the... Um, map up here real quick those are from yesterday very small earthquakes um looks like they barely even showed up anywhere out here um where are they <laughs> that's a good question <laughs> got to be hiding out here somewhere in the noise maybe um i don't know these are current aren't they let me double check mary lake 710 maybe one of these earthquakes here and here Either way, uh, that's a good sign that uh, things are very calm currently there at Yellowstone National Park. Not a whole lot going on. Uh, Oklahoma. Let's see here. Got a couple earthquakes here so far this morning right around the El Reno, Oklahoma area once again. Still seeing a little swarm of activity out there. And the new Madrid seismic zone showing a little bit of activity from yesterday and today. The latest quake of 1.7. A little bit further south, but still within the New Madrid uh, Hazard Zone here in Arkansas, Brinkley, Arkansas, 1.7. Uh, there's an earthquake up there in the Iceland area from yesterday, Five Pointer. Looking at a couple different web cameras there um, on YouTube show some smoke coming up, meaning that the eruption is uh, coming up towards the surface. I don't know if it's broke the surface yet or not, but there is uh, some smoke coming up out of the uh, one of the ground the ground there, right around the Rec James Ridge area. Um, looks like an eruption has started at the uh, one of these volcanoes here. Not for sure exactly how to pronounce that one, but uh, either way, still watching it. Uh, Definitely seen quite a bit of earthquake activity here recently. And um, Iceland is very active in terms of volcanic activity. It's always popping off up there. That's a spot where you want to be for volcanic activity and the auroras. I've seen quite a few shots there. Mainly uh, in the wintertime when, when the auroras are, uh, you know, obviously it's darker. But you get the auroras stirring up there in the sky and the volcanic fountains make for a absolutely picture perfect photo uh, for photographers alike. They, I would love to see something like that and photograph that in person. That would be awesome. One of these days. All right, 4.0 way up north, almost into the top of the globe here. Kind of getting dizzy from that four pointer, that earthquake coming in. Well, at least on this flat scale model, it's gonna show it well over here, uh, 4.0. Over here around the sea, way north of Russia, along that plate boundary here, it looks like. Historical data. Um, historical data shows us uh, that there is definitely some historical data out here <laughs> in terms of earthquake movement. But nothing big, um, as far as that goes. 
Uh, let's see what else we have. Scooting down south here, watching Japan, Taiwan area, and the Izu Trench yesterday. So far today, most of the movement looks like down south of 4.7, Papua New Guinea. We did have a 5.0 stirring up around the Philippines, 71 kilometers deep. Uh, also a 4.3 in Japan area. So it looks like still seeing a broad area of movement here across the Western Pacific areas, a Western Pacific plate and the adjacent Western edge here of the Philippine plate. Seeing quite a bit of activity uh, with an increase in movement. It looks like here across the area of the Kermadec Trench and the Tonga region. There's that uh, 4.9 Loyalty Islands area. Getting some return of deeper movement quakes here into uh, in the Fiji and the Kermadec Islands area. That is definitely adding some strain over further along the plate boundary, but also at the same time, got to watch for some surface movement to take place following that deeper activity. Uh, looks like the cycle is beginning once again uh, across here of the Fiji Islands area, Tonga Trench, Kermadec Trench area. Uh, and of course, it bounced back and forth here between deeper and shallow earthquake activity with a, quite a bit of momentum here stretching around the plate boundary. We'll continue to watch that. Uh, down here in the New Zealand area, of course, they had that pretty deep four-pointer here earlier this morning, it looks like, about 7 o'clock my time, 340 kilometers deep. Continue to watch this area. It's been slowly, this activity has been slowly working its way down here. Uh, across the plate boundary over the past few weeks. Most of the activity has been confined up here in a big swarm fashion. A couple different swarms here around the Tonga area, Tonga Trench, and a little activity here around the Kermadec Islands, but we'll watch for that swarming to possibly migrate further south. The uh, GeoNet servers here from today, make sure I got the most recent update, 2.9 from there yesterday. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> uh, let's see, all magnitudes. 37 minutes ago, 1.6, 2.8 an hour ago. Let's see what we have on the earthquake drums. Maybe, uh, maybe to show us something. Maybe it won't. There's uh, a little bit of activity there. Some deep. I think that's the. Uh, that's about six hours or so ago. Some activity stirring up there around North Island. That did show up uh, across the area. South Island area where these uh, seismograph stations are located in the red dot. Uh, shows about the same as yesterday. A couple earthquakes there from 12 hours or so ago. Not seeing any major movement, but of course, as always, with the uh, that little migration, we'll keep this area in, in mind. Uh, I don't think it's fully adjusted yet, uh, accordingly, uh, compared to other areas around the region of New Zealand. We had a, a lot of activity here in the South Pacific Ocean here. In the last few weeks, a bunch of acti activity up north with only minimal adjustment here along the plate boundary. And eventually that's got to that's got to that's got to catch up too, right? If you really think about it, that has to catch up. All right. Uh, the Alaska area. Not seeing anything major going on here. A little bit of movement uh, across the straits here. Cook Inlet westward. 2.5 map and above. Gives us a little handful of earthquakes here across the Alaska region. Some of this from yesterday as well, though. The latest of 2.9. Back behind the plate boundary here of the subduction zone. A big time player and producing some major earthquakes. Big Island of Hawaii. Uh, this is our quiet zone. Not seeing anything here overnight. I kind of find that hard to believe. Make sure I got the right setup. Newest. One day, zip zero. So when that happens, I tend to double check things. I kind of want to see what's going on here. Um, we're going to go to the volcano hazards map from the USGS and just check out a couple seismograph stations. By the way, Kilowal Kilauea Volcano still in the advisory and the yellow phase as far as the color code goes. Uh, this is the instruments and whatnot that uh, are available to the public at large because uh well it's this is a government institution here or, or uh i can't really call them a company but either way 
let's see what we got here for the um, zoom in to the Kilauea volcano area. Um, right there. What is this? Kind of looks like some magma movement. Something stirring up there. Hold on a second. I'm going to double check a couple nearby ones just to verify. That's stirring up as well. I think something's brewing. Um, let me double check the weather and see what we have out here. That kind of looks like volcanic activity for sure. Not wind. That is not wind whatsoever. And I believe the uh, weather is probably nice out there right now this time of year. Not a whole lot of activity here along the big island. So whatever's going on here is stirring up. Um, looks like magma movement to me. I don't know. Did it, is it? Did it already erupt? Let's double check and see if uh, Kilauea volcano, of course, has been on a pause. The last update here from USGS was put out on the fifth daily update, and that was just—I mean, literally five days ago. Mentioned that the volcano is currently paused, but this activity we're seeing is literally within the last. Um, hold on a second here. Go back and check it within the last couple hours. Here's the last six hours. This is the activity in question there. That looks like uh, magma movement. What? Uh, let me check the tilt meters here and see what's going on. We did see a. Uh, this is the past two days. We did see a major drop here. It looks like uh, yesterday. It looks like. Notice that tilt meter showing a deflation. But yeah, that's showing up right there as well. Um, all over the place. So that, to me, spells... Uh, let's see if we can look at the live webcams here real quick on Kilauea Volcano. The live webcam takes you to a uh, YouTube link here. So I'm just looking at these summit cams, <clears throat> seeing what's going on. This is the uh, the lava lake area, steaming, a l well, smoking a little bit here. Volcanic activity, but maybe something stirring up below the ground. It definitely looks like uh, some, some mam magma movement uh, underneath this area. We'll see if they uh, update this or not doesn't look like anything's visible at the surface as far as any magma goes or lava goes but uh, that's definitely a sign there when it shows up all across the stations like that folks uh, that's definitely some magma movement some of these are not working let's check way over here even way away from the crater area looks like picking up some movement as well not earthquake activity. That's definitely magma stirring up below. All right. Uh, so we'll keep an eye on that. A little bit of activity, earthquake activity across the Pahala area. But uh, this activity here is from yesterday. In fact, all of it here is from yesterday. I just find that really odd um, for nothing to be reported. All right. Uh, moving on here see what else we have across the air area excuse me uh, around the Himalayas 4.7 east northeast of the uh, not for sure how to say that but India area one of these days I'm gonna pull out my book of uh, uh, pronunciations here some of these names are just uh, it's it's difficult that's all I'll say <laughs> That was from yesterday. Uh, not a whole lot going on through the Middle East. Let's double check the EMSC models here. And uh, looks like a lot of older movement here from yesterday. Notice the uh, redder color rings. So not a whole lot going on currently there in that region. Over here across the uh, Atlantic getting a little swarm of activity. This is being reported by the EMSC. I keep forgetting I can't click on that anymore because it doesn't take me to the actual earthquake link. EMSC has updated their their design and their web page here so a lot of apps or uh, programs that were associated with the linkage 
in terms of uh, you know the earthquake data has been disrupted. Disrupted. Uh, looks like 3.4, the Azores Islands area, is where the swarming activity is occurring. As you can see here on the globe, that uh, activity has been, I think it was like that yesterday as well, so I'm still seeing an ongoing uh, swarm there. Of course, got volcanoes up here in Iceland stirring up. Uh, watch this area as well. South Sandwich Islands couple fours coming in there um let's see what we got from the usgs as we scoot down here one 4.6 being reported a couple hours ago 34 kilometers deep so the atlantic is stirring up definitely a time to watch volcanoes in the uh, divergent boundary zones puerto rico area still seeing a little swarm up here across the puerto rico trench although most of this activity here from yesterday we did have one just after midnight at 3.8. South America region looks fairly quiet according to the USGS EMSC model. Let's zoom in here. It looks like some smaller quakes there from yesterday. Another 3.1 coming in here outside New Guinea. We'll watch this today and see how it plays out with the Atlantic picking up here. Uh, we'll have to watch and see how much it picks up, but we could see the increasing in activity across the Mediterranean regions. Uh, the Indian Ocean and areas like that have been quiet for now over the past couple days. Uh, last seven days here it does show a little bit of activity um, around the Madagascar area and also over here around the Mid-Indian Ridge. Uh, of course, this area... Uh, does see some earthquakes in the uh, these divergent boundaries and fracture zones out here. What we got up here around uh, Yellowstone, 1.1 coming in right now. Guess we'll just watch it and see how this plays out. I'm not really seeing any major areas of uh, swarming aside from out there around the Azores area. Keep an eye, of course, on that region. Space weather activity, uh, let's see, I was just checking out the CMEs. I'm still seeing, I am still seeing um, web pages out there, so, social media platforms saying that we're expecting a major solar storm on Thursday. I don't know if anybody else seen that or not. Uh, a couple TV stations there out of Texas, one out of uh, Washington as well, saying uh, that we could see it down into 15 states. I don't know where they're getting their information from. Um, the forecast out here doesn't look like there's anything uh, mentioned here. I know if there was, uh, Kevin's pretty quick on to mentioning it here on his site. This was from uh, uh, this, this one right here. It's kind of funny. This solar flare actually happened uh, before, or no, this happened after the mention of um, the news article saying that there's a, a solar storm coming on, on Thursday. So this activity hadn't even happened yet. But they're saying there's a potential, potential faint Earth-directed component. But that was from the flare, uh, the M2.3 flare, which was just yesterday. And I had seen this um, that article here um, much prior to that. I think even the past two days. So not for sure which one they're talking about. I think they're getting some old information here. Because according even to the Space Weather Prediction Center, there's nothing coming up on Thursday. So I don't know what they were thinking. But I'm sure I'm not the only one that's seen it. Let's see, here's the incoming CME. A coronal mass ejection might be headed for Earth. It was launched into space this morning, July 10th, at 0355 UTC time. So 0355 would put that at yesterday sometime. Um, the partial halo CME will sideswipe our planet on June or July 13th, which is Thursday. But it's so weird. I don't know. I, I, I kind of think the news agencies had a uh, 
had information here before it was even put out. It's what is that? Uh, oh, what's that thing called? The uh, something something effect Mandela effect. You know when uh, things kind of change when, when you thought they were said a certain way. Okay, I don't want to get off way on that topic, but that would be a, another. That'd be a whole separate video, and that'd be hours long. But uh, either way, it looks like potentially there could be. Um, there, there's the flare that produced a slight CME. Here's the model. Uh, of course, Earth in the yellow circle here shows us a little glancing blow on Thursday. But man, these articles here, they were, they were actually on Facebook. Uh, KFOR and there was uh, KOMO out of Seattle TV stations that had mentioned about this... Um, this activity but it was so weird this uh <laughs> I don't know I don't know what's going on but it's a little odd either way look for that potentially Thursday maybe a little glancing blow to the planet uh, could spark off some G1 to G2 class storms and this was from this was from July 10th All right, uh, let's see what else. Let me get back to Solar Ham here. These guys, let's see, 3361 has developed a beta delta magnetic structure that harbors energy for X class flares. So that's gonna be 3361. Let's go check it out on uh, Solar Ham. I, I just prefer to use a Solar Ham site. I like the layout um, and the easy click imagery here. So 3361, latest imagery is going to show it over here. Very complex. It's got a couple different uh, cores here. Watch that. That is definitely capable of producing um, some good flares. They even mentioned the X flare probability. Uh, let's see what else got uh, yes this one's not too impressive and our big giant sunspot down here is just deep it's becoming defunctional and not looking uh, complex at all it's massive that's for sure but uh, it doesn't pose any major threat at least looking at that core that's gonna be this area right here but um, What was that sunspot number 3361 over here does and that's going to be right in here harbors uh, some potential for some stronger flaring uh right now it shows 99 percent chance for a c flare and flare at 35 x around one percent but according to the space weather uh, dot com site uh there's the x flare potential with 3361 And uh, we'll watch, see if this gets updated as far as the um, detailed forecast goes here on the three-day geomagnetic um, forecast here. I'm going to have to look into that, see exactly when i seen that article. I'll go back on that and double check. Just weird. Oh, maybe it was the heat. I was kind of outside yesterday uh, doing some yard work, and it wasn't even that hot, but it's just, I don't know. It's cooking me regardless. It's supposed to be a little bit hotter here today, California-wise. Uh, weather outlook for the Plains area in enhanced risk. Doesn't look like the tornado potential is down there. The uh, 2% is up around the um, areas of Green Bay, Rochester. So we're looking at Minnesota, Wisconsin area seen a two percent which isn't that big of a deal but still want to keep a heads up on the sky uh, and listen for the uh, alerts on the radio the main threat out here around the kansas area it looks like it's going to be some wind and those winds they can pick up you don't need a tornado to create damaging winds you can have some very strong outflow or even inflow winds from these thunderstorms that uh, can definitely do some damage out there 30 percent hatched area uh, that includes uh, Hayes, Kansas area, Lexington, Nebraska, 
Uh, we're looking at 65 knots or greater within 25 miles of a point. So just a heads up, straight line winds can do uh, and definitely do some damage. Hail probability up there as well around uh, Nebraska mostly. Um, looking at the windy map here, it's just looking at, uh, yeah, there we go, That looking at the radar over there, but there's not uh, nothing showing up across that area as far as that seismograph station goes. Uh, Temperature-wise out here, enjoy the coolness out along the west coast because things are going to cook. Uh, literally, it starts, it seems like it really wants to heat up here. Uh, beginning this Friday will probably be underneath a heat advisory uh, no, no, I take that back probably a heat warning um, They normally issue an advisory first and then a watch and then a warning the uh, Heat advisory or watch should come in Probably uh, maybe today or tomorrow for this coming heat wave that we're looking at 111 in Redding Sacramento 109. I guess a place to be would be San Francisco, although I'm not a big fan of that area for many different reasons. I don't want to be down there when a big one hits. Um, but I guess along the coastline too, Eureka, Crescent City, nice and cool. Um, and then we're going to really cook up, turn up the heat here. 116 degrees, 118. Uh, Calusa County, Sutter County down here, looking at some extreme heat. Uh, talking about probably some record-breaking temperatures coming up once again for the Sacramento Valley. Uh, the only good thing I'm noticing here potentially is a north wind, which would be uh, hotter. We, it keeps definitely keeps us hotter, but also at the same time drier. Um, when we get somewhat of the delta breeze in here from the uh, Bay Area, mixing in with that heat, it drops the temperature, but also raises up the humidity and dew point to where it makes, makes it feel just really, really nasty. Um, so north wind definitely going to dry us out slightly, but cook us at the same time, kind of like a dryer. Uh, and that's for Saturday. Sunday, uh, let's see, I know we're going to be hot. Oh, goodness, I hope that's not right. I really hope that's not right, but these have gone up even since last night. Uh, remember, we were checking these temperatures here last night, and uh, 122 degrees. Eee, I think I'm, I think I'm going to go back to Texas. <laughs> I think I'll take another week off and head back to the Texas Gulf Coast area. Anybody got a beach house out there I could borrow? Oh goodness! I mean, I it's yeah. It, it's humid, and the dew points are high out there in the Texas area, but there's, uh, it's not 122 degrees. Goodness, that's almost hotter than Death Valley. What's Death Valley looking at? Uh, about 120 or so out here, it looks like. 118. Furnace Creek, 120, but hey, we hit 122 up here. We're going to be breaking some major records, maybe some all-time high records here across the uh, Sacramento Valley. So uh, we'll keep an eye on that. Of course, this does change, all subject to change, but that's going up. It's not going down. So when the pattern goes up here temperature-wise, that means the consistency of the models are agreeing with one another. Uh, Monday, things cool down. If you want to call it a cool down here, got that delta breeze coming in. See, dropping the temperature in the Sacramento Valley area a little bit, slightly, <laughs> not much. But uh, definitely as you get closer to the bay, things cool down nicely. 64 in San Francisco and, of course, the coast range. Absolutely beautiful. Oregon as well. I don't know. Maybe it'll be an Oregon trip. We'll have to see. Either way, the heat is coming. And that's a fact. Looking at the uh, numerical model here from last night, uh, I want to bring in the... Yeah, let's bring in the broad view. See what's going on out here in North America as far as the symbols go. This is a, the generated computer model. Shows pressure differences, where they form, where they dissipate. Right now, we're kind of cool out here along the West Coast. Notice the neutral colors out here, just white. Uh, cooler temperatures out here into the uh, eastern portion of the country and up into Canada. But that's all going to change. We've got a high pressure building in. Uh, right here along the west coast 
major ridging come this weekend. That's where our high temperatures are going to peak out into the uh, supposedly 122 degree range. Got some troughing out here in the Gulf of Alaska, cooler temperatures, but I'm not out there, so I'd have to be on a boat to enjoy those. Uh, but either way, it looks like the Midwest area getting in on some cooler temperatures as well. And uh, cooking still up into the Canada region. Those guys, uh, I think they're having some major fires up there, even in this area. I was looking at the um, the uh, windy map in terms of fire intensity. Let's see where that went to here. Do -do -do fire intensity map now not every dot you see on here is going to be a fire it's just picking up maybe some heat from i don't know what but definitely looks like there's some good fires going on up here across portions of alberta area british columbia uh, and that's where that high pressure system is kind of parked up there right now creating those drier conditions uh, here along the west coast we really haven't had too many fires uh, i think they had a little vegetation fire or two down in southern cal but here in northern california even with this extreme um, winter that we had, a lot of rain, a lot of snow, that provided some major vegetation growth out here in the mountains and all over the place. I still have bull thistles in my yard that are 10 feet tall. Um, I gotta get to them, they're dry now, but I, they're, I'm gonna get to them before they even grow next spring. I'm not even joking, they're, they're not gonna make it another season. Uh, but a lot of undergrowth here in the mountains are turning dry and they're much taller than normal and that's going to provide some major fuel coming up this weekend when the heat wave is going to be peaking out uh, so right now there's no fires but knock on wood uh, we don't get any sparking up here not a good deal the uh, drought drought intensity map out here uh, still shows, well, this is, which model is that? Moisture anomaly, drought intensity. California is good. Of course, as you go on, that's the uh, 0 to 40 CM. Here's the 0 to uh, 100 deeper levels of the moisture or lack of moisture in the ground. California is still good. Even though the surface out here is pretty dry, if I dig down uh, a ways, I can still find some um, some wetness in the moisture. Things are starting to dry out in Texas and New Mexico, even after even after having all that uh, that rain recently. Goodness! All right, I'm gonna jump off here, folks. Have a good day. Um, enjoy your Monday, I guess. I mean, Monday is not really a the best day but just got to make the best of it right i believe i'm gonna do some more yard work here and um try to get a handle on these bull thistles because they are not nice uh, i think i'm gonna go out there with a machete i've tried the uh i got a steel weed eater and i put some blades on it for brush cutting and now that they're dry it shoots these needles these really sharp pokies at me and it, it's just a nightmare uh, so I'm just left with the alternative maybe going out there with a machete and seeing if I can't chop it down that way it's a little bit more physical work but I risk uh, getting some injuries going with the uh, with all the pokies on the bull thistles with a weed eater even with a brush atta attachment it's not good but that's the last year that they will be in the yard because i am going to make sure that they're not here next year all right folks have a good one please stay safe out there and uh real quick glance here at the earthquake map again nothing popping up yet we'll catch you guys back out here later tonight take care everyone peace out